start streaming. All right, you want to hit start recording? All right, very good. All right, hi everybody. We're getting ready to do it. I've got all the stuff. We are going to fix my personal iPhone 12 Pro, which legit has a cracked screen, and we're going to do it using all the stuff from Apple's self-service repair program, the brand new repair program. To start with, I've got my vacuum. I had to go all the way home to get this. This dog said in the manual that I read all 93 pages that you need to have a vacuum nearby. In addition, we've got sand. This is filled with sand. So, so, so much sand in case of any kind of a battery fire or thermal event. All right, here is my phone. Right now I can see that it is working. And if you can call me later tonight, then this was a success. Here it is. Now my iPhone 12 Pro has this really irritating flaw, I think. I bought this dumb thing from Apple for 50 bucks, this thing. This little card holder is attached by a magnet, which means this happens all the time. Oh, whoops. And it didn't take me very long after getting my 12 Pro to crack the front. And my rear camera glass is also cracked. Now, why is that important? It's for this particular use case of the self-service repair program. Who is actually gonna ever do this? And the answer is really only a narrow fraction of people, people like me that have two things wrong with their iPhone 12 or 13. If it's older than that, self-service doesn't exist and it's a very limited number of phones, so this one. Now if I were to go down to the Apple store, which for me is only 10 minutes down the road, and I said, hey, I got a crack right here on my screen, right there, in fact, it doesn't touch sometimes down on the bottom. They would say, we'll be happy to help you out with that. Your price, Jessa, is a easy breezy, what is it, 279? I wrote it down. I already forgot. Brad, help. 279. Yeah. 279 plus tax to get a Apple to put on at the Apple store a new screen. However, when the technician took it in the back and they quickly noticed, oh, you got a rear camera glass also cracked, they would say, no service for you. No screen for you, Jessa, you got two things wrong. So if I actually wanted to fix my iPhone 12 Pro, and I do with an OEM Apple part, then Apple self-service becomes my only option because with Apple, they will force me to surrender my device and they would just give me somebody else's refurbished 12 Pro. So that's the deal, that's why we're here. I'm going to fix my 12 Pro using all the Apple tools. So, what does it, uh, what did, how, did we, how did we begin? I began by going online. So I went to the new self-service repair program. So it's selfservicerepair.com. And I had to click around and I quickly was able to find the order form. So here is what I ordered and we're about to open up the box. So everything just got here today. I ordered the iPhone 12 Pro display bundle and that comes with my new screen and it comes with a screw kit because one of the rules you'll find out in the manual you can't reuse screws you gotta throw away the perfectly fine nothing wrong with them screws you gotta put them in the trash can and you gotta open up brand new screws in order to fix your phone so I have to buy all new screws so that's gonna come with my bundle I'm gonna get a display adhesive, the sticker, that's gonna help me make that factory seal, which I'm really excited about. And it's gonna come with these tiny little uh, security screws. Security screws is a clever name for pentalobes, right? So security screws, so that Gene can't come along when I'm not looking and open up my phone and uh, do voodoo to it. I also bought um, a bunch of other stuff that I don't even remember. It's going to be all in this box. But the main thing is what about the tools? How am I going to separate the screen without really damaging the phone? Because I've done these before and it's really difficult. So the answer for, from Apple about how you're going to do that, you can rent 
a toolkit. Now the toolkit rental fee is very affordable. It's $49 as long as I return it. So it's kind of like renting a car. In fact, this, it came with this big like checklist, which is itself hilarious because it got a check on things like no scratch on surface, oxidation color uniform, and my favorite, the handle can move smoothly, no stuck happen, and my other favorite, handle no shaky under no working, use tool to measure. Gene can verify, you got all checks on that, right? So you might want to first check your, your toolkit before you get started because if I don't return the toolkit in the same immaculate, no shaky condition, then my credit card is going to be charged $1,000. So I have an authorization on there right now for $1,000. Now, how much is it going to cost me to actually change my self-service iPhone 12 Pro screen compared to going to the Apple Store? Remember, the Apple Store would decline this phone because it has two things wrong. But if it was just a cracked screen, I would expect to pay $279 plus tax at the Apple Store or $279 plus tax to mail it in for a five to seven day turnaround from Apple Mail and Repair. That's authorized mail and repair. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save some bucks here. I'm going to do it myself. And what's it going to cost me? It's going to cost me $269 plus the $50 tool rental, plus the fear that if it's not no shaky when I'm done with it, it's going to cost me $1,000. So I'm actually spending more money to fix it myself than to even use the authorized repair. So see, see, <laughs> draw your own conclusions. All right, now let's look at the toolkit. Now I have not opened this. I, I am just as, as green as everybody else here, uh, although I am, as you may recall, I am Apple certified. I am an Apple certified iOS technician. I got this just by taking a quick test, which I did live on this channel. You can look around and see that. Although I have never done an authorized repair, this is my first one. So what came in the mail? What came in the mail? All right, Gene, you want to hit stop, start. We're going to make an edited video. This, this is the director's cut. If you're watching live, director's cut. <laughs> it's coming soon. It's a tidy little video that shows you what's up. All right, hit start recording. Time for the unboxing. We are going to open up and see exactly what do you get in the mail for your self-service repair program with Apple. So without further ado, here is box number one. Rah! Yeah, this. Here we go. This is it. This is, oh, my, well, took, took off a microphone. This is box number one. And in addition, Don't, you, you also comes with a free workout Oof. box number two. Now this I have to return. I paid $50 to borrow these two boxes and all the mysteries within. And if I don't return them, it's going to cost me a thousand dollars, but don't worry. We, we've got, we got this. All right, let's see. Oh God. <laughs> what is behind door number one? What is in Pandora's box? This is, this is a gift from Apple. All right, this is a nice box. Pelican Storm Case. IM2750. Who wants to look that up? I bet this is like a $250 case. Oh god, all right. Is there a manual on how to open it? Oh. What is possibly in here? Oh, you got to push it in. Okay. Woo! Excellent. And can we side cam? Maybe? Here we go. So this is in Pandora's box. We have a little toolkit contents. Maybe if you dark to see. All right. What's in here is a display press, repair tray, battery press, which we're not doing a battery. A box containing the adhesive cutter, a bunch of other stuff, and a box containing 
a bunch of screwdrivers. This is kind of, already you know this is misleading, I actually didn't realize that in the toolkit you would get the drivers and stuff like that. Uh, probably it was, it was there, I was ordering it uh, from my phone, which has a cracked screen, so maybe that's why. Okay, toolkit. Let's see. Return label, that's nice, I like that. And what do we have here? Mysterious 3D printed zip ties. Okay. Uh, we got this thing. This looks like the uh, repair tray. Got to get all these words right. Let's keep it on this side of the table. On the right side of the table is the stuff that Jessa would ordinarily use to change a screen on a 12 Pro. And we'll put on the other side of the table the stuff from the Apple kit. All right, what else is in the big kit? Let's take out the little things. We got some fancy looking $100 screwdrivers. We got something that I think looks like a press plate and some suction cups. It would be nice if there's anybody local that has done this before that wants to run over here and show me. This I think has to do, is a, this I'm going to guess is the battery roller. So we're not changing the battery, so I think I'm going to put that right back in. Battery flattener roller thing, the thing that, that I think does some kind of voodoo if you're putting a battery in the, to, to basically go like this so that the adhesive is nice and even. Anybody Apple authorized it? Recognizes that guy? I'm going to put that right back in there so that I can get my thousand dollars back by returning this. Okay, now we got this big dog. This is the beeping machine that I'm excited about this. This is the magic device that's going to make my phone just as waterproof as it was last week when I took it to the Dominican Republic and decided, you know, it really isn't that waterproof with that giant hole in the rear cam, but as far as that display seal, it's going to be perfect. That's everything that's in this giant box. It still seems pretty heavy. All right, that's box number one. Enormous box that, <laughs> this giant box that had this thing in it. Yay! And a bunch of drivers. Okay, now, box number two. All right, two boxes. How to make your UPS driver hate you. Do the Apple self-service repair. All right, I got another return label. I'm gonna leave it in here. And this just says the iPhone 12 Pro Toolkit Case 1. I got a, a plug and I got a big thing. This, this is the heat, the heat guy that's going to magically take off the screen super easy. We'll see. And, didn't I already get one of these? It's different. Is it? Okay. Then that must be the guy that gets hot so that I can take off the screen. Seems legit. Nice and easy. Hey, Sam. And we have that. Now, where's my screen? I've got my tools, I've got the heat guy, I've got the press guy, and what I don't have, I think this goes with the heat guy, what I don't have is the screen. So let's look at the next box. I think I'm gonna pull up chat if I can figure it out. I really feel like I should have hit my watch to see how many calories I burned um, doing that, because it definitely feels about the same as doing a set of squats. Woo! All right, let's go to YouTube and see if I can find uh, iPad Rehab for chat. Hey, Sam, you need to text Dad. He said no. Well, he's, he, he didn't know I was doing a... Stream. Do you want to come and see what it looks like to fix your own iPhone with Apple's authentic repair program? 
He said no. All right, here we go. Hey, all right. My $40 heat plate from China versus Apple's $250 heating thing. Yes, we are going to do a head-to-head. -head. Uh oh, Gene, that looks like it's gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Worth it to keep it all for $1,000. Well, here's the thing. I am excited about the ability to make the factory waterproof seal, and I'm not sure about this. Probably this is lame, but I don't know. Compared to, ow! <laughs> that, that's, that's on? That's on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Wait, where's my fireproof gloves? Give me some sand! Throw some sand on it! <laughs> All right, compared to the, you know, traditional heat mat that we always use that I think is great. That thing's awesome. So we'll see. We're going to do two repairs, my phone with the Apple Soul Service Way, and then just one of the phones that I have here in queue. We're going to kind of show you the practical way for you to repair uh, an, an iPhone 12. And you can decide which one you want to do. All right, let's keep with our unboxing. All right, continuing on with unboxing. So let's make another clip. Let's hit stop, start. Okay, so we've covered the big tools, the display press and the heat thingy majig that you get in your $50 tool rental kit. Everything here you have to give back. Now, whoops, uh-oh, that's gonna be a thing. That just cost me $1,000 right there. I'm just gonna get an F on the, on the you know, surfaces have no marks or whatever. All right, so now where's my screen? So here's my other box. Now, when I was, Ordering this online was unclear to me what was in the toolkit and what was, you know, it seemed like it was kind of really duplicative. So some of this stuff I think I got twice. Here's something that I bought and I'm going to keep this. I spent 70 cents on this for the official authorized certified. This is the magic tool pr prior to today unavailable anywhere for anyone. This is the Apple adhesive cutter. This is the Apple guitar pick. This is amazing. This is the guitar pick used by Apple. Look at that, Gene. It's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. 70 cents right there. I'm going to keep that right there. All right. Also, I've got a packet of two penelopes that uh, seemed like I had to buy when I was checking out. I don't really know. This is Let's find out. This is, this is a bit for the screwdriver. I thought you had to buy the screwdriver. And I wanted to see the authentic, in the wild, the magical iPhone micro indicator 2460, code number five. This is the $100 Apple screwdriver, and I wanted to see how does it compare to Jessa's favorite, the Weha driver, uh, with its lifetime warranty. So it looks like, and I'm happy to report, that in the toolkit, they give you some rental drivers. But I'm going to keep this one. All right, Jean, you got to open that. On it. Yeah, child lock, help me out. So I got that and that. All right. Next, it was unclear to me whether or not the display adhesives, the stickers, were going to be in there, so I bought that separately. So I ran up a bigger bill than I needed to because I wasn't sure what was coming in these bundles and what wasn't. So they do say that if you haven't opened things that you can return them, so maybe I would try to do that. Okay, here is my display, so I'm going to hang on to that. And then I've got some scary stuff in here. Do not break seal unless using parts, but I have no idea what's in here. Should we break the seal? That's crazy. Let's break the seal. What? That seal, seal is already broken. Did you see that? This is live. This was... <laughs> this do not break the seal unless using parts. This better not be empty. And ta-da, what is it? It is a pot lid. I don't know why. Oh. I, don't, I don't know what that's up with this. Okay, so we got this really cute little fancy pot lid here. If you like cooking like square macaroni, you got this pot lid. 
But this one is mine, so I'm going to stick it over here so I don't get confused with the rentals. Okay, what else is in the big box? We've got another heavy duty do not break seal unless using parts that is actually intact. So I will now break the seal. And now I'm planning, I'm so excited about the ability to make factory sealed waterproofed seals that I do intend to keep these. So you are allowed, and I did order a standalone display press just because I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be good. Um, and I ordered this, but I think that's probably dumb and I might return it. This I'm going to be stuck with because I just <laughs> cut a sticker. This is my own copy of the thing that was in there. So I'm going to put that down here. I don't think we need it. And what else do we have? We have do not open unless you use contents unknown. Exactly. And I've got another one. Do not break seal unless you are using the unknown, unlabeled brown box contents. Should we open it? Of course. Let's do it. And it is, ah, I think this is another copy of, of this. So this is the repair tray. Can't do repair without a repair tray. So saith. We should have kept that one sealed. <laughs> we could have, should have kept that one sealed, says Jean. Jean, can you research? Actually, Jean, that looks sealed, right? Can you like just like... <laughs> You know, I mean, it's as sealed as that other one was. All right. Now, that's it for the unboxing. Unboxing is now complete. And we have the official, this is the first time I've ever seen one of these. This is the holy grail, guys. For years, we have fought for the right to possess a brand new OEM Apple display for the iPhone 12 Pro. Here it is right here. Now, I'm curious to compare it to the aftermarket one that I got from Mobile Centrics or Injured Gadgets or a standard uh, part seller. So we're going to compare these two, just look at them, and see what's up. Now, this display costs $269 plus tool rental. This display, which is a soft OLED aftermarket display, this costs about maybe 150 shipped. So 269 versus 150. We've got two white boxes with two displays in them. Let's see. This is where I do wish we had like a, a roof camera. All right, let's do it. Let's open the official OEM. Let's put on it OEM Apple. Legit screen. Sam, you need to text Dad because my phone is about to get destroyed. And it may or may not ever work again. But don't you worry, it is backed up because I read the manual. Here we go. Ah. I think it should like pour out like glitter or a cheer or something like that. Ooh, here it is, guys. It is an authentic screen with a cover on it that I see now has very important things. You see that? Screws. This is your brand new screws. Because remember, you can't reuse screws. If you've been misinformed by tens of thousands of repairs that I've done on this channel, where every day, all day, you see me taking out perfectly fine screws from putting them from one device to another, that was all wrong. You can't reuse screws. You have to throw them away. I don't know why, but that's what the that's what the Bible says, so that's what we're going to do. These are my new screws, so that I don't mix up the order or who knows what. All right, here's the fancy display. Look at that. It's got this really nice little packaging. I like that a lot. All right. How does the authentic screen pair with the board? Well, we will soon find out, but I think it has to do with logins and the internet and talking to the mothership who will then bestow from on high the ability to pair the screen to the board. Now, notice that this is my brand new OEM Apple screen, and it looks pretty similar to screens you've seen before, but it comes already with a loudspeaker on it and a flood illuminator 
and an ambient light sensor and a proximity sensor. All those goodies that normally we transfer from the old screen to the new screen, we're using the screws. This time we're getting a brand new copy of all that. So we're going to be throwing away, in the name of the environment, we're going to throw away the perfectly fine loudspeaker proximity sensor, flood illuminator, and ambient light sensor. We're going to throw those in the trash with the screws, and we're going to pair this new one to the device. Now that does make it easier if you've never done this before. But to be honest, looking at the $1,000 worth of crap on the desk, I'm already a little intimidated and I am actually intimidated because I don't know how to use either one of those things, so hopefully it'll all work out. But that's what we're looking at. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your OEM brand new Apple screen. Now, if there's something wrong with it, no returns. You opened it, it doesn't matter if it's got a bunch of dead spots, it's yours now. You did it, it's your fault. Blame Gene if yours doesn't work. Okay. Now let's compare that while we're standing here to the aftermarket one. What does it look like for the aftermarket one? Apple assumes we're going to strip the screws, so better safe than sorry. Right, it's institutionalized repair. And there's, there's not really anything necessarily wrong with it. It is a good idea if you're trying to make it as easy as possible. This part I'm not sure about the fitting in with the easy as possible. <laughs> but whatever, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this is going to be a breeze. No shaky, no bumpy. All right, this is my aftermarket screen. So from, from here, as far as what I can tell just looking at it, they, they look you know, pretty much the same. Mine also comes with a variety of adhesive. I don't know if it's as good as the adhesive in the Apple or if it's worse or better, I have no idea. Okay, so those are our two screens. And we're gonna be doing uh, two, two devices here. We'll leave that one up there. All right, Gene has now opened the glorious $100 uh, screwdriver. How do I make it be penelope? Somewhere in here. Is this it? Yeah, here we go. I love how they don't say penelope, that they call this thing the security bit. So I really don't, don't like having to have switching bits around. This is something that's definitely see. getting lost. In fact, I'm going to throw it across the room right now just to have the joy of being the one that just got rid of it. I'm just gonna, just gonna flush it down the toilet right now. <laughs> Save myself the horror. Pull it down, there you go. Oh, okay. All right, that's mine, I'm keeping it. All right, let's see. Now I'm gonna stick this in here. Okay, okay, that seemed pretty Pretty painless. Okay, now we are going to, I think, get started. I'm going to check in with chat. We are going to hit stop recording. So you just go ahead and hit stop and then pause on that. Let's look at chat for a minute before we start doing the repair. So let's see. Um, I hope we can use the pairing device for easy repairs. Well, you will have your hopes dashed, XRC Gaming, uh, because in order to or in order to get this screen, I had to enter the IMEI of my device. So this is a big question, and I want to answer it. And I'm curious, what happens if I order this screen using like my IMEI and I don't install it? What happens if I just put it on the shelf and wait for somebody else to come in with a Crack 12 Pro that wants an OEM screen? Can I? put this screen that I have now, that I own, on their device and enter in their IMEI to replace the screen and then say, without the five day wait, say, okay, I'm ready to pair. I don't know. And that's a question that I think is gonna be really important to answer as we go along. But right now, Apple knows my phone's IMEI and had to use that in order to get this screen to begin with so it's going to specifically pair the new screen to my phone. All right, other questions? Mm, you have to be careful because they're not gonna charge your CC for items that you didn't know you had to return or whatever. Do the sand grains have little Apple logos on them? Let's check. No, they're just, uh, <laughs> it's not even sand. It's just, it's just a prop. All right, uh, I was gonna put kitty litter in there, but I didn't even have that. 
All right, what else is in here for chat? Do you have to do you have to return the old screen with the flex and whatnot? Another really good question. And the answer is no, you don't have to return the screen. So the buyback price, Apple will buy back the screen. The buyback price for this, my beautiful, hardly anything wrong with it, iPhone 12 Pro, Apple will credit me $30. So they will pay me $30 to send them back and harvest that LCD. But I, or L, o, o, L. I don't have to do that. I can keep it. And if I keep it, then I pay that full price to 69 and if I wanted to, I could then sell the OEM OLED screen to a real company <laughs> that is willing to pay the market value, which is about $70 for a 12 Pro today. So that's pretty significant. If you can get this off in good condition, then you, it has value. So you can sell it to somebody that wants to refurbish it for $70 rather than sending it back to Apple for $30. But yeah, they are giving you credit for your buyback and you, you're not required to do it, as far as I can tell. All right, other questions or are we ready to jump in? Let's see. If it's still intact after banging the big Pelican boxes on them, I would be surprised. Let's see. Do you need to send the old screen back? You don't have to. So we, we talked about that. What's in the box? Okay. Uh, so I have to video everything, just like AliExpress. All right, let's move on. Uh, where are the chain mail gloves to open the phone? Uh, you're right, I forgot about the gloves. I got my gloves here. I didn't, I didn't have the heat resistant magic gloves, so we just get these regular old, regular old uh, lab gloves, boring. Okay, the screwdrivers from Apple are literally uh, Wera screwdrivers with Wera, is that Vera or Wera? I don't know. It says Wera. I know, but I, I feel like it's got the V pronunciation, like the, in which case it would be Viha. I don't know. That's above me. That's above my grade. All right. Use live chat or call to pair the parts after install. Yeah. So this is almost identical to what we've heard described from IRP, independent repair parts providers. It sounds like you can do IRP without the contract. That's the, that's the nutshell of this. And if you are so inclined, I think there is a use case for this. Like for example, if you have gone on a research mission to Antarctica and cracked your screen and there's no Apple store, then they can ship you this, and as long as they're cool with you shipping it back at the end of the you know the summer, you could fix your phone there. I you know or the use case where you've got two different things wrong. Okay, so should we jump to the manual? So you guys can follow along in the manual that now now it's gonna see where is it? Where's the manual? I think it's pretty easy to find from support.apple self-service repair. Let's just go back to the self-service repair store. Review the Apple repair manual. Read the manual. Yes. Read the manual. So now you can follow along. I'm at support.apple.com uh, manuals and then I'm looking around and I got there from just going to selfservicerepair.com slash home selfservicerepair.com slash home, read the manual, click that. So now I'm at support.apple.com manuals and I'm gonna click around until I see this is an iPhone 12 Pro manual. So everybody catch up and read along with me. Here we are at the iPhone 12 Pro manual and with this setup, you guys can read along at home. And then when we make this into a, a formal short video, which if this is too boring, click out. You know, come back when we when we sum sum this up at the end. We're this is live and we're learning just just like you've never seen any of this stuff before today. So very exciting. Um, Gene, you can read out like super chats that I see like that. Will they ban an address that uses the program too many times, like a repair shop? I would I don't know, but I would guess no because this seems pretty much like fine. Your repair shops want to do OEM repair. Fine. You 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 can, you know. That's what it seems like it is. I can't see this being a uh, an actual of value to actual end users, but you know. 
Uh, let's go to the manual and let's start scrolling. Introduction, read the entire manual first. So we're going to skip past that and it's going to warn us about lasers, which is, you know, a little scary. Now we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to read the kind of way normal people read, which is a whole lot of scrolling. Okay, so we can see a bunch of stuff that looks a lot like an iFixit manual, kind of telling us uh, where things are in the phone. This is the battery, this is the speaker, you know, etc. And then it tells us all of these things that we could order, like the things that we've been calling like battery shield, they call cowlings, so we'll start using the, the same language. Cowlings and tools, and going through all these tools, you got to have an ESD mat. I got the mat. I got some tweezers somewhere. I got an ESD wrist strap right over there. Uh, I got the heat resistant gloves. Keep them over there at the hardware store so I know exactly where they are. Uh, safety glasses. I got my sand. I got so much sand, lots of sand. All right, so we're going to continue on to the heated display removal fixture. All right, we got to figure this one out. Remove it from the box. Done. Already ahead of the game. Cut and remove the zip tie from the handle. I don't see a zip tie. Moving on. Number three. Turn. This is very scary. <laughs> it looks scary. Yeah. This is a thousand dollars. You mess it up. Thousand dollars. Turn the top knob counterclockwise to raise the suction cup. Okay. It's going up. Should we click to the other camera? We're going to. There we go. See, it's moving up, right here. Move it up. Remove the packing styrofoam. There was none. Give me a, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna write that down on my rental car. I'm not getting, I'm not paying a thousand dollars for that missing styrofoam. You hear, you hear me, Apple? It's not there, okay? So you need to tell approved by this guy? Yeah, and he needs to, put his check into a line for uh, styrofoam. Turn the emergency stop knob. I'm going to guess that this is the big red, red one here. I don't think we're going to need that for a while. All right, turn the emergency stop knob clockwise until it clicks and protrudes from the stop guard. I mean, I'm not really sure I would call that protruding, but it seems fine. So I'm sure it's fine. Plug the power cord into the fixture. Yep. Check. Yep. Check. Excellent. The fixture won't turn on until you flip the switch on the back. Okay. Great. Oh, look at this. They, they got the do not open me, void your warranty. <laughs> Dare me. <laughs> Things. I got a big check mark. It looks like it's heating up. Can you? Let's uh, let's let's show. Stuff's happening. I got a thermometer-looking thing and a check mark, and it's seems like it's it's breathing breathing alien life form kind of thing. Smell like cotton candy, Brad? <laughs> yeah, I think it's making cotton candy. Brad, do you want to warm up a slice of pizza? <laughs> Battery safety, warning. This device contains a built-in lithium-ion rechargeable battery with soft battery cells. Battery safety is the number one concern when repairing a device with a built-in lithium-ion battery. Only technicians with the knowledge, experience, and tools required to repair electronic devices should replace a battery, or else they'll die. They'll catch on fire, and that'll be it. They won't even care about that thousand dollars because they'll be dead in the ground. It doesn't say that last part though. Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, do make sure you got a lot of sand. All right. How to set up a workspace? All right. Here we go. We're gonna set up our workspace. Tools. Clean, dry, untreated sand. You got it. <laughs> sand. So much sand. Clean, dry, very nice sand. Heat resistant gloves. Yep. Got them at the uh, over at the store, hanging on the hook. Safety glasses with the ever so important side shields that you can see here, my side shields. <laughs> uh, ESD safe cleaning solution. 
cleaning solution. Eh. Uh, workspaces used to repair Apple devices should meet the following criteria. ESD safe workbench. Yes, with the ESD safe logo. Look, don't believe me? You don't think this is ESD safe? Look, what do you call that? You got it. It's an ESD uh, wire or whatever. Okay, at least two feet away from paper. If I crack that screen, I'd be really pissed. <laughs> All right, that's, that's fine. I'm fair. That's fine. Sand container with, it's already told me sand. Sand container within reach. Got it. Yep, I got it. Uh, oh, on both sides of the workspace and not above the workspace. Gene. Dope. That's it. We're done. We gotta get... <laughs> We're fail. Oh. We need two containers of sand. Oh. Brad, print out another sand. Brad, I need you to print out another sand and put it on another trash can because we need, we need to. Adequate ventilation. Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Warning. All right. Should we? I feel like we should make another clip. That's, yeah, let's do stop, start. This is just for battery safety. All right. Now we're, re we're going to read the manual in full how to handle what happens if the battery explodes. Now, battery explosions are things that do happen. In fact, they've happened here before be when Mark is around, but never outside of that, you know. We have a fire station right out that door. And the most recent time, I don't know if you remember this, this was like a month ago, when Mark is, in, is back there, oh, yeah. feet away from the fire station, where the fire trucks are and the firemen are right there. Hmm. When he caught some battery on fire and thought, what I'm gonna do, instead of reach for the sand, he carried the flaming device through the whole shop to the front door and pitched it out <laughs> into the street. So it's important to keep a calm head. And no, what will you do when the battery explodes? And the answer is you're just going to throw it in your sand. It's going to be totally fine. So no worries. But let's see. Let's not be hasty here. Battery safety is very serious. Uh, if, if you notice that your stuff starts to smoke or emits sparks, that's one of your first early clues. Uh, the battery pops suddenly and quickly puffs out. The battery contains the lithium battery or device that contains one begins to emit hissing. <gasps> that thing is hissing right now. Hissing or popping sounds. What about like the sound? Don't use water on the battery. Don't. Uh, do smother it with plenty of clean, dry sand. Got it. Noted. Uh, dump the sand all at once. Oh, you're not supposed to put it in there. You're supposed to put the sand on the thing. Ooh, okay, I'm glad I read this. Timing is critical. Gene, the faster that you pour all the sand, the sooner the reaction will be contained. So don't just do it one grain at a time. That's not going to work, okay? There's going to be a quiz later. You need to dump it all out as fast as possible. Gotcha. That's for your maximum survivability of your thermal event. Do contact local fire authorities, which you can either walk out to the front of the shop and go around, or you can just <laughs> go right out that back door. Either way, it's up to you. Uh, leave, do leave the room for 30 minutes. Uh, don't return until there's no more smoke. Do wait for 30 minutes before touching the phone and wear the heat resistant gloves and the safety glasses with the side shields to remove the device from the sand. Remove it from the sand, we'll pack that thing up, <laughs> put it in that black box and send it to Apple. Uh, do wipe the affected area with water. What? Why don't you dig your, your, your phone out of the sand and hose it off? Interesting. Okay. Do dispose of the damaged battery or device including any debris removed from the sand, according to local environmental laws. Okay. All right. We're going to, so that's all we're going to say about that. Uh, you got to have a lot of sand if you're going to work on these things. Now, I'm going to have to skip past some of this stuff. Broken glass, vacuum cleaner, which is why we got this right here. Got the vacuum cleaner with the HEPA filter, just in case. So I, mine is cracked, but I don't think it's going to qualify as broken, broken glass, but I am going to 
slide to power off. All right, let's get to the good part. Let's see how this stuff works. Uh, stop the repair. If first steps. Okay, here we go. First steps. We are already on page 20. Wow, we're on page 20 before we even get started. Step one, back up the phone. Don't skimp out on this important step. And I, even I, backed up this phone right now because things can and do go wrong. So back up your phone. Discharge the battery fully. I'm not doing that because that would take too long. Turn off the phone. I am doing that. So this phone is turned off. Get rid of your dumb case that made the thing break. Put this in the sand and then just send it to the fire department. Uh, um, remove all cases, clear your workspace, put on the ESD strap, uh, or skip, skip down. Continue down, SIM tray, uh, unnecessary, skip. Why would you have to do that? Why you gotta take your SIM out? Is it because that thing gets too hot? Uh, all right. Gene, do you have a SIM ejector tool right there? Although this says use a paper clip. It's on the black, yeah, right there. Sweet. All right, I'll take out my SIM. Although it is unnecessary, as far as I can tell. But we're rule followers around here. Include a SIM remover? No, Gene. It's not, it's additional, all right? You, you can, I'm sure they'll be, actually, this is not an Apple authorized SIM tray, so just forget you ever saw that. It says the Apple authorized SIM remover is a paperclip. They didn't include a paperclip? Nope. All right. Press the SIM tray back into the side of the enclosure. What? For reassembly. What? Display it before you begin. Read the battery safety. Done. Read broken glass. Done. Get a bunch of stuff we already talked about. Oh, this is taking forever. I've already, I've already stopped watching this. This is just too boring. All right. Uh... Where? What, let's see. <clears throat> uh, I haven't removed the SIM tray a single time during my seven months as an AASP tech, says Living Meme EXE. I hear you, Living Meme. And uh, let's, let's get to the part where we got to stick it in this thing. Okay, here we go. Removal. Removal. All right, let's hit stop, stop, and start again. All right, it's time to get to the good stuff. We are going to start fixing the phone. Step one is we're gonna take out the two bottom penelope screws, or as Apple calls them, security screws. And I'm gonna use this sweet, sweet new $100 torque driver and see how does it feel. Feels a little weird, it feels giant. Okay, yeah, it's kinda like, I don't know. Is like an enormously like really giant. long. You know. <laughs> okay. Is it coming out? What the heck? Okay, got it out. I'm going to use the uh, sold separately at iPadRehab.store uh, magnet tray. What are you supposed to do with? It? Oh, I know. You're supposed to throw them away. Right. You're not yeah, unnecessary. Save those. Yeah, forget this. All right. Forgot. I forgot. I was. Silly me, All right? Take out your other bottom pentalope and similarly, just, that's just trash. Pitch it in the safe. Done, okay, that's gone. Unnecessary. All right, flip the switch on the back of the thing to turn it on, which we did, internal fan, blah, blah, wait for a check mark, I got the check mark. If an error code appears on the screen, you need to start writing some stuff down, I'll tell you that. Gently insert the phone into my doohickey. All right, let's see how this possibly works. This is the stuff that better be easy. All right, looks like that. Insert the phone into it. Seems pretty foolproof there. Uh-oh, why didn't it fit in there? All right, please stand by. <laughs> It's like, ma'am, you have broken rear camera glass. It's not going to fit in there. Seems a little rough. Uh, geez. That's tight. That's tight. That's what she said. Okay. All right. 
insert it, uh, the display face up, the lightning connector at the bottom, and ensure the clamp on the side of the pocket is flipped up. Whoops. Clamp flipped up, yeah. Okay, that's a lot easier. And <laughs> Apple, you might want to move that line up. Just saying, I mean, I don't want to tell you your business. Slides in <laughs> nice and easy. Wow. <laughs> now flip down the clamp. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or here's a pro tip, ship it with it up. I don't know. What do I know? All right. God. All right. Put on the heat resistant gloves. Get ready to watch Jessa burn herself. All right. Now you got to put this in the oven. Align the cutout on the bottom of the pocket. Uh, align the cutout on the bottom of the pocket. Into there. Okay. This thing. Yeah. All right. Sl slide the... Slide it in there. Don't, I'm going to read the warning before I do it. Down. Warning. Don't insert the pocket into the fixture without wearing the heat resistant gloves. Don't do this. This will burn you. It's going to burn the shit out of you. You're Jean. never going to get it out. <laughs> Brad might need a run to the hardware store. Fire extinguisher? No, we have the, the heat resistant heat gloves. Heat resistant I'm gloves. sure it's fine. Well, what's the big deal? Look at that. Survive. You should be able to get that out. I'm gonna get it out just fine. Would you maybe like, some paper towels? Would stuff. you like to put that uh, flex? That's unnecessary. On your fingertips. Brad, I'm gonna need to borrow your hand. <laughs> okay. Now what do we do? Slide the pocket into the fixture until you hear the pocket click into place. There you go. Ooh, it did click into place. Ah! All right, now it's got a hot sign here. Silicone thing. You gotta dip all your fingers in that. <laughs> Brad brought me the plastic dip for my hands. That'll be a that'll be the worst case scenario. All right, now the screen will turn red. All right, let's show. This seems dangerous and definitely not in the manual. Don't lift up while in operation. So it turned red as soon as I clicked it in there. What are you supposed to do if that thing catches on fire? I'm not sure we have that much sand. Mm, the screen. On the fixture will turn red and the timer will count down from two minutes while the pocket heats to the correct temperature. When the timer ends, the fixture will start to beep and the screen will turn green. I think we should take advantage of this time to remove the unnecessary paper. and extremely dangerous paper before we have a thermal event. Okay, let's see what's going on with the chat while we wait for this. You know what I'm gonna do at the same time? Let's do a side-by-side. -side. While we're removing the screen the Apple authorized way, let's take this other iPhone 12 and we will remove it the traditional independent repair way. So we will use a traditional screwdriver and we'll do the exact same steps, more or less. We're going to take out screw number one and save it. And we're going to take out screw number two. I've got a countdown on my Apple guy for 100, uh, looks like a minute, two minutes. All right, now we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the iPad rehab. Don't need to wear heat gloves, but it does burn you if you don't. We're going to just stick this down here on that mat and wait the same amount of time. All right, let's go ahead and skip up in the manual. All right, well, here's what's gonna happen. When I get green, which is not yet, I'm gonna turn the knob on the fixture clockwise to lower the su Who suction the cup. hot girls? Hmm? The hot girls in chat. Wait, what hot girls? I don't know, there's hot girls and boys in the video oh, chat. Oh, you guys ban them, Jean. <laughs> Best hot girls and boys videos. Should I make him a moderator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I signed. I didn't sign in. I don't have any band privileges. Do you? Yeah. There you go. Oh, these are band. Yeah. Band. All right. Let's see. Let's na let's put uh, some other people that we do know as moderators, so that they can do that. So scroll up and see see people that we know. Who wants to be a moderator? All right, 
Ooh, I actually caught a live stream, says Laura Moser. Laura Moser you're using Moser. your left hand. Why are you using your left hand? Huh? Somebody's asking you why you're using your left hand. Because I'm left-handed, like Jean and like all of the other repair uh, repair people that come with am built-in ambidexterity. Uh-oh, it's getting ready. We've got 10 seconds left. we got to know what's next. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where's my manual? Uh-oh. Okay. All right. In... Okay, it's happening. Turn the knob on the fixture. Be quiet. It doesn't know how to shut up. All right, turn it down as close as possible without touching the phone. Don't. <laughs> To avoid damaging the phone, don't turn the knob before the timer beeps. Okay, the fixture will beep until you lower it. Grasp the handle. What? Grasp the handle and slide the suction cup straight out until... I wish I had done this on that guy's phone. <laughs> All right. Okay, do that. Grasp the handle and slide the suction cup straight out until the edge of the suction cup, whoa, aligns with the bottom edge of the display. Okay, failure to align the edges is, is bad. Turn the knob to lower the suction cup on the display. Okay, yeah, it seems like it's down there. All right, <laughs> then flip down the handle, it is flipped down, Huh? To secure it to the display. Okay. Seems legit. Now, slowly, I feel like we should, can we zoom with that? Like, this is the part that everybody wants to see. Hmm. Slowly turn the knob on the fixture counterclockwise until the display begins to separate from the enclosure. If you Nope. Alright, let's do this. Alright, now this. Okay. Slowly turn it counterclockwise. Oh, yeah. <gasps> nope, came off. Alright, stick down. Nope. Piece of shit! I want a refund! Maybe go like that? Alright, maybe push it down this way. And make it go this way. Slowly. Nope! Seems bad. Not in love with this at all. That's all the way down. And this. Is it happening? Okay. It's happening. It's pulling it up. I can see the crack on the screen. Alright, slowly. If you don't see a gap, wait 30 seconds. A gap. This is, feels like a bomb is going to pop us. This is terrifying. All right, I do see a little bit of a gap. You could totally do this at home. If you still don't see a gap, turn the silver part of the knob until the display begins to separate from the enclosure. All right, I think it's separating now, which is cool. Insert the edge of the adhesive cutter. Adhesive so cutter. It's in your pocket. Yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> that would have really taken a long time to find. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Insert the edge of the adhesive cutter. All right. Sounds like a sounds like a breast pump. Do you hear it? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> All right. Insert the edge of the adhesive cutter. Run the cutter between the display and the enclosure to the right and left as shown until the display partially releases from the enclosure. Uh, this is a maddening way to do it. I just want to stick my finger in there and rip it off. 
I can't do it. It's too. I can't do it. It's too. It's like a. I do not like this. I am going to rip off my, my Apple certified thing. Okay, there we go. Now that feels a little bit normal. There we go. Come to mama. Come on out, sweet, sweet screen. You've been with me for a while now. You're, I'll take good care of you, don't worry. I got plenty of sand in case anything happens. You don't have to worry. And this is wearing down my special cutter. I'm gonna use the real tool here. Never do this. Do not use the human fingernail like I've been doing here. All right, what are you supposed to do? Until it partially releases from the enclosure. Avoid damaging the flex. Don't tilt up the bottom of the display more than five degrees. Why do you care? You're throwing this thing away. It's going the way of the screws. Yeah, it's up on this side. I just want to rip this thing out and take it off the normal way because I can't stand it. There we go. Yes. There we go. Yay! All right. There we go. Adhesive cutter. Sweet. Okay. Now it's mostly up. Uh, press the eject button. Uh, well, I think we're supposed to get rid of the suction. Well, back to step 12. Flip the handle to release the suction cup. Gently slide the flat end of the black stick under the edge of the suction cup to release it from the display. The warranty voiding. Oh, it came right up. By itself. Press the eject button. Doesn't seem hot to. Press the eject button. Yeah, there we go. And hold both sides of the pocket and slide it straight out of the fixture. I don't understand why, where was the part where I'm getting burned? It's not hot. No. Mm. Okay. Your Wait. Other, your other phone's hot. Yeah, that is, that is. Okay, so now I'm going to guess that I just reverse steps here. And now I can slide it on out. That was a real pain. And, oh wait, what does it want me to do now? Place the phone into the repair tray. Here we go. Slide that hot doodad right in there into the repair tray. Phone is in the repair tray with the display face up and the lightning connector facing the cutout. Remove the gloves. Done. Whew. I'm just hang those back up at the hardware store. Slide the display slightly towards the bottom of the phone. Insert the edge of the adhesive cutter into the top of the phone. That seems really hard to do. This would be quite challenging if this is your first phone. Because you're, you're not gonna be able to insert this into the top of the phone, it doesn't go in there. Like I, that's, not, that's not possible. Right. You know, you can get the screen off down here where you, but where it's already made a gap, but you you can't do that. This thing is way too thick. Like that. There's no. That's not. No. Good luck, Gene. You want to try? Is it just a plastic piece? Yeah, it's a now melted plastic piece. There. There you go. It wants you to. It wants yeah. you to make a gap there. Go ahead. Impossible. 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 Fail. Throw this phone away. Now you get to go down to the Apple store and pay $1,000 to get another iPhone 12. I mean, I'm not reading that wrong, I don't think. It says slide the display slightly towards the bottom of the, of the phone. Slide the display slightly towards the bottom of the phone, which is now like large. Slide the display. Okay, insert the edge of the adhesive cutter, which is now melted plastic, right here, in between the display and the enclosure, like in between these two things, like, a, like that. Start in the middle, cut along until the display is free. 
It's impossible. That is not it. No. Those instructions cannot be made. Brad, we need a third opinion. Can you give us a quick third opinion? The instruction, look, just real quick. You need to think over there. All right, I'm going to give you this. You, you won't even see you. All you just have to do is use this tool to make this display come up up here. Mm. Like, I already heated it up. See, like, the, well, the suction cup made this part, like, release, right? Fair enough. And these ones open with this flexes over here, you know. So it wants you to use this, which is now melted, to, like, I mean, look what it says. Is, am I crazy? Am I missing something? Slide the display slightly towards the bottom of the funnel. So this is the repair tray. Here you go. It's in there. And then insert the edge of the adhesive cutter, it says, into the top of the iPhone between right. the display yeah, right. and the enclosure. That's yeah. not happening. That's not happening. Not today. Not today. All right. That's what I thought. All right. According to our calculations, which has been triple verified, step 18 is not possible. I mean, it, you could heat it up again, uh, but that's just silly. They say the Bible can't be wrong. <laughs> All right, so then caution to avoid damaging the flex cables. Be careful. Insert the repair tray suction cups into the slots in the repair tray. All right, so I'm going to have to go rogue on this and use the fingernail method to get this top of the display, you know, free, right? So, good thing we are not wearing gloves. Uh-oh, turn my phone on. All right, good news is that my phone has survived this process, but we're going to have to use the good old-fashioned fingernails. There we go. Hey, still working. I'm going to re-turn it off. I really don't have touch anymore. Great! That's fun. Isn't that nice? <laughs> now my screen is actually damaged. Okay. Moving on. Good thing we should have discharged that battery. Guess Apple's right, huh? Alright, so we're going to stick this back in the repair tray. So here it is in the repair tray. And now we got to dig Everybody up... Everybody is concerned about your other phone on the heat mat. Okay. Let's do it. Let's put that one on, on, on the hold. And now let's take this one. So Jean, can you like swivel a little bit? All right. Now let's talk about how we would take the screen off of this phone, right? So this is hot and I actually do wish I had some gloves, but we'll just use the paper towel. There we go. Boom. Now it's over here. So now how are, how are we going to lift this up? This is challenging. So in the old days, we would use the iSesimo on the older phones. This is actually a little too thick. So for this phone, we're going to use Magic Glass. So these are the iPad Rehab Supply Store tools. And this is what I would use to open up a phone just like you know, an iPhone 12 Pro. I've already taken the screws out. This is hot. And this is at, this is at you know, something north of like 80 degrees Celsius. So now I'm just going to slide this right in here. See that? Maybe you can zoom. Does it tip down? Or do I need to be more over here? Good. All right, so I'm going to slide that. And then I'm going to kind of apply a little bit of pressure until I can turn that tool around. this and then I'm going to kind of twist it and use a fingernail and work around the edges and this is how I do it and I'm careful and know that there's little pieces of flexes screen flexes right over there that I got to be careful of so I'll kind of let it open up like a book last, but I just work my fingernails around here. You could use the adhesive cutter, like once you kind of get it up a little bit. You know, this is just a guitar pick. And I think I want my 70 cents back. 
I don't really like this as much as an actual guitar pick, and I definitely don't like it as much as this guy. All right. There we go. So that's how I would open up an iPhone 12 Pro. And it, they don't really like to lean on these screen flexes, so we'll kind of let it go back closed. There we go. Okay, now I have to locate the uh, doodads, the suction cups. But I don't know why, but we'll, we'll go and hunt for those. Okay, All right, you want to hit stop and I think they might be in here. Yeah. Actually, aha. Uh -huh. These are, these are the ones that I'm going to hang on to and save. And these are the ones that I'm going to use. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to grab a drink. BRB. Um, I think Betsy yeah. or Maisie picked him up. with chat. How do I turn this thing off? Because I need this for monkey done. Jean, what do you think about this thing? Keep it or return it? Uh, return it. <laughs> Brad, what do you think about this hot box thing? <laughs> return it. How much is this? Let's see. I really hope that the little sealer is, is better. All right, insert the repair tray suction cups into the slots in the repair tray. All right, let's see. Would it be easier if you drink sand? Fizzy drink, LaCroix. 
Uh, no, Remember the endless uh, plain Wegman seltzer. Perfect for fixing Apple devices. All right. Shouldn't have drinks on the workbench. It's against the safety guidelines. Ooh, yeah. You're right. I'll put it back here by the sand. Okay, but you got to stay hydrated, right? This is taking a while. All right, what else is going on here with chat? Uh, return. Uh, first, they sell you a piece of shit self-breaking device and then sell you protection covers. Let's see. Mm. Left us hanging. Camera flash is going off. What camera flash? Mine? No, it was the... We were oh, too that? far away from the... Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. Apple strategies make everyone give up and then charge extra in the store. All right. It's just a preheater and a suction cup. Yeah. It's a preheater and a suction cup. That's exactly what it is. But it beeps, so it also has a speaker. All right, insert the repair tray. We're ready to move on. All right, should we uh, stop and go? Is that, okay, so we hit go. All right, now we're gonna, now we've got the old screen is off. The phone has unfortunately turned itself on and because the screen no longer has touch function from whatever happened along here, it's a little bit more cracked than when I started we can't turn it off. So we're going to just say, oh well, and move on. And now we're going to move on to the second piece, which is insert the repair tray suction cups into the slots in the repair tray. I can't imagine what's going to happen now, but this sounds really cool. What do you think this is going to be? It's going to be like a little stand, I guess. All right, tilt the display. This is like building IKEA furniture. Let me take out these. Oh, I'm. Oh, you got a second? Yes. Okay. Tilt up the display towards the suction cups. Mm -hmm. Okay, be careful. All right. And then to avoid damaging them, ensure the internal display clips are released before you. What? Oh, I see. They're saying make sure that you've got full range of motion of your screen before you try to do that or you're going to jack it up on that side. All right. And then, oh, that's cute. They like suck on there. That's very cute. Dope. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, press the top of that so that to secure it on the suction cups. All right. There we go. All right. That's better. All right, if the battery is dented, punctured, or damaged, run screaming. Seems all right. You can find a service option at support.apple.com repair. All right, use a torque driver and the micro sticks bit to remove the two trilobe screws from the lower cowling. Set aside the screws. I think they mean throw them away. They better have given me those screws back. Okay. So, did I get one of those tips? Oh, here we go. Which one of you guys, nope. Are you a tri-wing? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write Jessa was here. I'm going to put an iPad rehab business card like very under there. <laughs> okay, let's, I'm going to use, are these all the same or what? Yeah, they say we're out on them. Oh, I see. You're supposed to put these on here and then like color code them. Okay, so now Lefty Lucy, did it say, say set aside the screws? 
not magnetized, boo. So, there we go, there we go. I would think that for my uh, $50, you could have magnetized that. Set aside the screws. Use ESD safe tweezers to remove the lower cowling. Save it for reassembly. What? Save it? Use a torque driver to remove the three trilobe Three? I mean, there's four of them. What are you talking about? What? All right, skip that one, but take off these three. That doesn't make any <laughs> sense, Jean. There's, do you see that? Zoom in. There's four screws there. And it wants us to do something else with it? Okay, use, use this guy to remove the three trilobe screws. One. I want my hundred dollars back. One. I thought these drivers were gonna be so amazing, and I was. It was like, like a magical, like experience, like going to Disney World. That's what I thought using that driver was gonna be like. And it's not, Jean. It's not even magnetized. <laughs> I'm like. I'm a little bit sad about that. All right, took those three things out. <sighs> Hold the upper cowling in place using a torque driver and the micro sticks bit to remove the last, oh my God. They're saying you gotta hang on to it so that it doesn't fly away and rip up your cable of your piece that you're about to throw away. All right. Yeah, it fell in there. Uh, use the SDC t to remove this thing. It doesn't tell you that there's this little lip there, so know that there's a little lip that's gonna make it come out. All right, now my screw definitely went in there because it wasn't magnetized. I will just get it. Here we go, fourth screw. Step 26, use the black stick to lift. Oh, you are out of your mind. You want me to use a board breaker? No, are you kidding me? This is how you cause problems. This is how you knock stuff. Don't do that. Use the black stick to lift the end of the battery flex cable off the connector. Well, at least we're disconnecting the battery first. I will use the human fingernail, which is a better tool for the child. You must disconnect the battery to make sure that the phone remains turned off. And it sure is off now. Use the black stick to lift the end of the display. I can't do it. I am going to uh, abstain from that as well, and I'm going to use the human fingernail again because I just cannot do it, not on my phone. All right, now that's off. Step 28, use the black stick to lift the end of the other part of the screen off. All right, all right fine. Oh, this feels so wrong. Eh, can't do it. <laughs> Use the black stick to lift the end of the receiver flex cable off the connector. Uh, they mean this one. All right. Hold the display by the edges. Okay. Hold the display by the edges. Pull the tabs on the suction cups, cups to release them. Okay. Easy. And then set the display down on a clean, flat surface. All right. After you finish cutting the adhesive. Over on that side. Hey, yay! Hooray! There we go. Apple Repair Self-Service successfully has removed my display. And here's my phone. Okay. Remove the suction cups from the repair tray. Use ESD safe tweezers to pick up the adhesive. Uh, what? 
and then pull the adhesive to remove it from the enclosure. Repeat it until... All right, so they're saying you've got to clean the adhesive off of here. All right, I am going to need some actual tweezers for that. We'll use the iPad. We have tweezers. Did they give us any tweezers? You know what would be hilarious? If they gave us tweezers that said, like, I fix it on it. Alright, we'll use the iPad Rehab ESD safe tweezers. Okay. We're going to use the iPad Rehab tweezers and we're going to. I thought there was going to be like fancy ways to do this stuff. Sit here and pull off adhesive. This is the important part. You got to do it to get that good seal. All right. It just says, pull the adhesive to remove it from the enclosure. I feel like heating it back up. I think it's been too, too long, got too cooled down to make this easy. Brad, I'm going to need some alcohol. This is so boring. Really, you think you're going to fit in that shot? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I might have to go a little bit rogue here and add some alcohol. Don't tell anyone. So that I can actually get this off you know, today. All right, let's read ahead. Caution, and this is a big deal. Don't touch this guy up here. Don't touch any of that stuff, or it will stop working, because that thing has got some kind of little laser in it that gets cranky and does not like to be touched in any way. No means no. no. All right. We got any Q-tips? Use ethanol wipes. Oh, good. I'm allowed to use my isopropyl alcohol to clean any adhesive residue from the enclosure. Oh, good. I'm back on the straight and narrow. All right. Thanks, Brad. Yay. Brad also brought me a handy tool that is perfect for this purpose. And I like that a lot. Now we can get this off. And I really don't like how it's written, like, you know, you should come get all this off without using alcohol. And then, oh, by the way, come back and clean it with alcohol. That is going to make that take a really long time. But, whatever. Curious to see how this is actually done at the Apple Store. All right, so then we're going to clean, continue to do, clean, we're going to continue to clean off this adhesive. And the next step, once this is all cleaned off, all alcoholed off, is going to be reassembly, yay! Which is where this better start really being amazing. Because I want a factory seal. All right. We can hit stop recording because this is too boring for anything. All right, in the meantime, let's chat with chat. Jessa, see if you can finish the repair in 30 minutes. I have a flight to catch. Well, I will do that. I will speed up. All right. I can't imagine that it would take more than 30 minutes to put a screen on, especially when you don't have to transfer anything over. It is pretty hard, though, to think about, like, what if it was your task to say, 
dumb down a, a screen replacement on a 12 Pro so that, so that anyone who's never opened an iPhone before can do it. Like, that's hard, you know? Like, there is, that, that was certainly doable on the older phones, but on, on the 12 Pro, it's hard. It's a little bit tough to get these screens out. They're really recessed in there. So I can see why the kind of heat up suction cup approach was what they went with. What would you do, Brad? How would you, like, if you had all the money to make it any kind of way, what would you do? I don't know. Same thing, probably. Yeah. Heat it up and lift it. See, now my, I have a warranty problem because the alcohol has just made my never been water damaged iPhone 12 Pro now has a pink water damage sticker. So if I did go to the Apple store to say, hey, what about my rear glass? They would say, no warranty for you, Jessa. You have a water damage sticker. I think that should be made clear in a little note here in the manual that I'm completely reading. A little, be careful to not uh, do that. This, this adhesive comes off nicely when the phone is hot, so I kind of feel like sticking it over there on the heat plate, but that would be really cheating because that's not something everybody's going to have. And I really want to kind of make the point of doing it their way. But if I was writing a manual, I'd say, if this is not coming off easy, heat your, heat your phone up again. Because getting 100% of the adhesive off is a pretty big deal. I wonder what happens if I try to heat it up in that thing, like with no screen on it. It's probably fine. It's not going to come off nicely. Alright, let's see. New screen comes with speaker, like it's IRP. Yes, it does. So the new screen going on is going to be easy. The hard part is going to be calling up the Apple store and saying, make my face ID work again, yo. So the right now, the uh, part is... Here's a question. Thinking out loud. What do you guys think about this? What if I transfer over my my iPhone uh, receiver and the flood illuminator and the paired parts, transfer it over onto my new screen, and I save the OEM one there, and then I, you know, pay for another screen, and then can I pair that to some other device? You know what I mean? Like if I bought a second screen with somebody else's IMEI, is there something about that particular part that's already paired to this phone or no? Probably not. Oh, I bet not. Well, so if you're watching this live, this is super boring and this is the kind of stuff that um, you know, everybody wants to know, what does this look like? So once we're done with this sort of live process, I'm going to make a edited video that just kind of shows you how, how these two pieces work so that you don't have to die to watch this extremely laborious. But I wanted to show you, what is it like live? This is the first time that I've ever done this. This just showed up today. And we're seeing what does authorized repair look like with the OEM screen. And it's super boring. All right. What happens when we transfer the original ear speaker to something else? Nothing. It won't work because it's serialized. It's paired to my phone. So I could put it in somebody else's phone. 
I mean, it would work if I transferred it over, if I wanted to, you know, speed up. If I wanted to say, hey, hey, Apple, no thanks on your offer of repairing my new screen, but if I want to not have the display message, you know, because this is an original Apple display. Still like this to be really perfect. Speaking of, you should stream more. Haven't seen much activity. I know. Always intend to stream more and then get busy with other things. What are some fun ones? I've got a few here that I was going to stream. This other one here, the roller coaster phone. This one, iPhone 12 data recovery fell off a roller coaster. That was going to be my stream for today. So maybe I will do that in a couple of days. All right now, I don't have a water damage sticker at all. Here's my water damage sticker. Oh, well. Perfect. Great. So that solves that problem. I really wish this phone was heated up, but I don't want to put it on the heater. I don't want to put it on either one of these heaters. So this adhesive is not just to make a waterproof seal, it is to also like give a cushion for the screen. So you want it to be really clean. And this is just not quite getting it. It's just all gummy and gross. Do you guys, Brad, do you still use like Goo Gone and stuff on the iPads? Uh, no. I just use a little bit of alcohol on the iPad. Those ones I usually pick and dry. Yeah. I think the main thing is it not being hot. Alright. Maybe stupid question. I always transfer them without issue, but because it's paired with the IMEI, can you, after you swap the screen, still replace the ear speaker with the original? I think that I could. I mean, I'm guessing, but I think that I could swap them and then um, put, you know, like I could, I could put, I could move over my original ear speaker and it would work, but then I think I would get the, this unable to verify genuine display, but it is a genuine display, you know? So if I skip that Apple pairing step. Someone wants an electric car update. Electric car is doing just fine. I, I have not yet fixed it from the <laughs> deer incident, and it only tries to kill me every now and then. It does did try to kill me today. It did stop in the middle of Route 64 for absolutely no reason. Really? Yeah. It's like, you're home. Because it's like 180, you know, is near to the corner. So it was like, you're home. In the middle of the highway. It's just like, so stopped. And it's like, not quite. You gotta go around a corner, buddy. <laughs> and the driveway is just over there. And it's like, no, it's fine. Nice. Yeah. And there's one particular stop sign that is that it, it just doesn't see. And every now, I took a video. I was going to actually post it called "Stop Trying to Kill Me, Tesla," where it just doesn't stop. It's just if you don't hit the brakes, it's plowing right through that intersection. Where it it just has always been like that. And I've always wait, and I've s dozens of times said, "Hey, Tesla." Uh, don't you want to, you know, learn here? This is a stop sign. You're not stopping for it. And it, one day, maybe go on, but not anytime soon. All right, and here you got to be so Man, careful. Man, the girls and hot boys are back.
Can you ban? You can't hide user from channel? No. No. It's not possible. Hide user from channel. Yeah, make Mr. Bean a moderator. If somebody was a moderator. Well. I work for you, break I fix. We're authorized. We didn't use any of that equipment. We just slapped a new screen on with no adhesive. <laughs> Apple author. Alright. That's as good as I feel like getting it. Okay, the adhesive has been cleaned up. So let's get rid of all these guys and we will move on to the next step. Okay, so Jean, should we hit start recording? You might want to zoom out a little bit so we can make a break. Okay, the adhesive has been cleaned off with alcohol and especially taking care in this area. I don't want to touch that guy. These guys get cranky. So it's as good as I feel like I can get it. So I'm ready to move on. So let's go to the next step, back to the manual. And we are on step one, reassembly on page 41. So let's see what does it say. Inspect the internal display clips for damage before reassembly. Uh, they mean the they mean the the little bits of little metal guys on your screen snug into some receivers and they just mean make sure that those aren't I don't know bent. All right. Ensure that the internal display clips are at a 90 degree angle and aren't bent or damaged. I think they mean on your new screen. Uh, they, they must mean that. That doesn't make it any, nothing else makes sense. Right? Inspect the display. If the internal display clips are damaged, you may need to replace the display. Okay, I see. If they're saying if you've taken it off to do something else, that you got to make sure that these guys aren't bent. This guy, this guy is not bent if you're putting that one back on. This one is not going back on. All right. If you're installing a replacement display, peel the protective liner from the top and underside of it. All right, so here we are where here's my new screws. And, ah, the OEM authorized Apple display. Here it is. Peel this guy. Peel. Hmm. Put, place the enclosure in the repair tray. So this is the enclosure. Enclosure means phone. Put that thing in the repair tray with the lightning connector facing the cutout. All right, got it. And inspect the true depth camera. Okay, so that's good. Inspect these guys. Ensure that the top edge of the true depth camera is under the lip of the enclosure, which it is. All right, incorrect position if that's, you gotta get that right. All right, if the true depth camera is positioned incorrectly, use the black stick. They don't like to say spudger, they like to say black stick. To move it away and inspect, make sure you don't have any loose screws or other problems. All right, align the replacement display adhesive over the enclosure with the top holes over the true depth camera assembly and the bottom tab on the right. Okay, where is my new, my new one? 
Did they actually give me one? I know I have the ones that I got, but did it? Did one come? This is the, That's the aftermarket, aftermarket one. one. So this is the box. What is in that envelope there? Oh, that's the one you bought? This is the one I bought separately. As far as I can tell. Is it on the back side of your screws? Is it yeah. in this pile of papers? Is it the back side of the screws? Nope. No, nope. that's a good guess though. Is it part of this? Uh, as far as I can tell, I do not have that. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's in those boxes, but for now we're going to use the, the one I bought as a separate product. So I bought, in addition to the display assembly kit and the tool kit rental, I bought a adhesive. Here it is. This looks like I got two of them. Yeah, they're the same. Let's compare this to the... I mean, that's the same stuff. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> These are the same! There's One has pink cellophane that is just covering up what's actually blue, and the other one is all the way blue. But the, 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 there's no way that these are two different manufacturers. I don't know. All right, we'll use the OEM Apple one. All right. Align the replacement display adhesive over the enclosures with the top holes at the top and the bottom at the bottom, which looks like it would be, like, how are you supposed to, how is, how are you supposed to tell what's what? That's like really hard to, to tell. All right. Yeah, there we go. Top, that looks exactly like he has it in the picture. It is identical to the picture like that. Okay. Ensure that you've removed all the adhesive residue from the display and enclosure before you apply the replacement display adhesive. Wow, nobody takes it off of that. That's crazy. Okay, the replacement display adhesive has a top release liner, a middle release liner, and a flexible bottom release liner. Grab the tab on the bottom release liner, one, out from under the adhesive while pressing it into the enclosure, which I think they mean for us to do this. Important, don't remove the top one yet. Alright, let me make sure it's nice and clean. Alright, they want us to slide it up just like this. Alright. Okay while pressing it. The replacement display adhesive for your model may look different from the illustration, but the steps are the same. It may look like this, because they're all fine. Place the display adhesive press plate. I like this. This is new. The square macaroni lid. This is cool. Replace, this is, this is awesome, ready? Place the display adhesive press plate on top of the enclosure with the icon at the top right corner as shown. That is cool. I like that. So I'm going to keep that and put it in my pocket. <laughs> All right. Position the repair tray. Ooh, we get to go to that thing. All right, I'm, I'm going to fire this off my desk. Good time has come and gone, my friend. You are a worthless piece of crap. Sorry. All right, we got this now. Position the repair tray with the iPhone in the display press. Okay? Like, hey, okay, but... 
<laughs> okay, down here. And it looks exactly like the picture. that there's going to be a hole here. Yeah. So there's two holes. So you got to line it up on these two nubs. All right. Seems legit. Okay. Pull down the lever until the display press locks. Oh, it feels like I'm totally breaking this. Ah! God, I can't do it. That <laughs> Sounds like it cracked that screen. Ugh. All right. Wait until the timer on the display press beeps. This would be really cool for iPads. China, I want you to make us one of these for iPads. Like stuff that needs it. All right. Pull down the lever when it beeps and pull out the release knob and then lift it up. It didn't have me put the screws in. You don't have your screen on. Huh? Oh, we were yeah. just doing okay. your adhesive right now. All right. Freaking out because it <laughs> seems like the last step. Push. All right. Pull push. this out. Red. Push down. This? Push. I'm not pushing down. Push, push down on it. No. And hit the button. No. Ah! <laughs> oh, that, it's terrifying. Okay. It's all right. Wow. Did it smudge it? It's amazing. If that camera still works, that's going to be a miracle. Okay. All right. So that's cool. It has, uh, it has like, did an even pressure for the pressure sensitive adhesive. It got pressurized, and that's totally legit. So there you go. Remove the repair tray from the display press and remove the press plate done. Remove the left section of the top release liner first. The left section. So it wants me to start over here and then, then remove three sections running along the top, right, and bottom. Don't remove the middle release liner yet. What? Um, all right. Let's try to figure out what the hell this possibly means. Don't remove the middle. What will we do? This? Okay, here we go. Uh, is that right? This like seems the like the middle is coming out here, but what do I know? This seems like the word middle is what I <laughs> yeah. use to describe this. Uh, Let's look ahead and see what we're doing here. Next, we're screwing on the screen. Yeah, okay. All right. Despite the phrasing, don't remove the middle layer, what you need to do now is remove the middle layer. I see. So there, I think they mean that this entire thing is the, the top. So we took off the, the bottom in order to put it on there to begin with. This is the top, and what's left is the middle. Now we're cooking with gas. Let's get rid of this is all just now. Debris. All right, these doodads. Is this my new guy? No. Nope. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's so weird to, that they all have the parts on them, so you're like, Okay, well, the one that's cracked, that's my old screen. Yeah, it looks the same. Okay. Old. New. All right. Don't remove the middle. Insert suction cups. Move it on. Step 12 on page 46. Align the left edge of the display. Press the ends of the receiver flex, the multi-touch flex, and the display flex. Press, press. Press the end of the battery flex. Press, press. Using ESD, position the cowlings and 
use the black torque driver and the micro sticks to install two new trilobes. All right, so it basically put screws back in. Gotcha. All right, that, I'm throwing those away because I can't take it. All right, we're gonna plug in these dogs. One, we're gonna reposition those so that they're in the correct orientation, although the thing doesn't say anything about it. We are gonna take very great caution not to bend the battery flex, even though there's no mention of that either. We're going to calmly listen to the sounds of the neighbor dogs. I don't know if I can do this without a microscope. Find your youngest child or grandchild and have them plug in all this for you. So that you, so that it can work. All right, now you're supposed to they want you to do the battery one first. So stick this back on there, but use two new screws. I hope they got good quality control on those screens. I know, exactly. Yeah, no test. Don't worry about testing it. So you're right. not going to turn it in. You're going to wait until they can definitely be like, well, you probably cracked yourself. You probably smashed it in the press. Or who knows what. I don't know that I can withstand putting this thing back in the press. All right. How do I get these screws out? Alright, I gotta peel up this dog. This is so silly. Look at this trash. I throw that right into your choice. The landfill or the river? Hmm. For the environment. Brad, I need a magnet. Real bad. Yay! Awesome. Little, little edit. All right. Yay. Once I get this phone fixed, I might use it to record a different video of changing the screen on one of these so that like, we can get close. Use the other one to in in do the lower cowling with the two new screws. The upper cowling has a tab near the second screw hole. Yes, it does that fits into a slot. Yes, it does. Look guys, it's got a little tab right there. So pay attention to that. You gotta do it like this and down, this and down, being careful. And make sure these flexes are, are laying down nicely. All right. Okay. Seems, seems okay. Nope, can't use those. Gotta use my new ones. I'll throw those ones away, forgot. This is incredibly boring live stream, I'll tell you that. Okay, does it say put in all four lower? Use the black to install four new trilobe. Trilobe screws. Why have we been calling them tri wing? It does make sense. Pentalobe, trilobe does make sense. It's consistent. All right, don't over tighten. I've done something else. Brand new screws installed. I think it would be fun to examine under the microscope their, their claim 
that these screws have an adhesive. Right, they're, they're, that's they're why free. you can't reuse them. No, they don't. Right. Some of them do, but those don't, and neither did these. There's no adhesive. They're exactly the same. There's absolutely no reason why I can't stick those screws back in there. Okay. Uh, peel the first strip from the middle release liner. If you like IKEA furniture, you're gonna love this this kind of repair. All right. So now I am supposed to. Start down here. Here we go with these. And near the bottom, clockwise, starting near the bottom. Peel it. All right, there's one. Peel the third strip clockwise, starting near the top left. All right, I'm gonna need to peel that one, I think, a different way. Okay. And the third one, so this is where I can see the little, like, those guys keep you out of trouble. I will say that this display step, that pushing it down, has made it a lot easier to peel these guys. It's not coming up. <laughs> so, I like this guy. He's my, you know, he's terrifying, but uh, I like that guy. Clever. I like it. All right. <sighs> Middle release liner has been peeled. 20. Inspect the display adhesive with your old eyes. To ensure that it's in the correct position and not damaged or wrinkled, if the adhesive is damaged, remove it and apply replacement adhesive. Available in five to seven days with just a small shipping storage. Repeat step three to ensure that you didn't mess up the damn camera and then continue. Pull the tabs on the suction cups, get rid of them. Tilt down the display. This is terrifying. I'm already too scared to do it. Tilt down the display to rest on the enclosure. Okay, but how am I going to clip it in there? <laughs> Remove the suction cups from the repair tray. Okay. I think I'm going to need that soon. Press all four corners of the display simultaneously. Mm. I can't do that. No. <laughs> no. Are you out of your mind? I can't do that. You should I do that, Brad? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. This is my fault. I'll do it on the next one. I can't do that. It's too terrifying. I'm going to press down these two while I gently hold this up and press. Oh, God. Chat, can you. Should I press them all down at the same time? Uh. Let's see. Mm, I can't do it. All right. It's too scary. So they said press down all four corners. I can't do it. I'm just going to go down nicely. I can't do it. I'm going to do it like this. Where no, I can, you can do see it. it. Do all four. No, I can't. I'm gonna just make it go in nicely there. Now, there, click. Okay. Until you hear, and the display is flush with the enclosure. Word. All right. Caution. I hate how they do the cautions <laughs> after, after they're you already... it's like on another page. You're like, well, I survived that. Caution. You better make sure that the flex cables aren't trapped between the display and the enclosure, which you it's too are, late now. Too late. And you know what? I fixed the 12 Pro Max last week where that happened and it killed the display filter in the device and needed to work ah, Feel the edges. I did. That's what I did. Why didn't you tell me this back then so I didn't have to feel so guilty? <laughs> feel the edges of the display for variations or gaps. If it's not flush, repeat all removal steps. Fire up that guy again. And get that okay. Three more spend hours to the spend screen. another three hours to take all that adhesive. I still know? haven't mentioned test the screen. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, so, yeah, we haven't throw done that, that screen yet. Yeah, exactly. Test the screen. All right. Then repeat reassembly steps one through twenty-four. Thank you for that. We'll move on. Oh God, we got to go back to this thing. All right. Okay. Now I'm scared. We're not testing it. We don't test. No test. Yeah, that is ballsy. 
He's like, that's like Ryan level repair where he's like, audio IC, every single screw backs in, more in screen on, now test. You know. Okay, we're going full Ryan. All right, put this thing in here. Position the repair tray with the iPhone and stick it back in here. What about the cover? No cover? I don't think I, I need the cover need anymore. That. Okay. <sighs> Those digs got rubber feet on the bottom of that. It's gonna press. It does. Right okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you for that tip. Otherwise, the anxiety goes down a little bit. Pull down the lever until the display press locks. Ah! Ah! Brick! <laughs> what it? Ah! Jesus! Ugh! Oh. <sighs> I don't. I can't do it. It's too hard. All right. Wait until the timer. Then pull down and pull out the knob and lift it up. Okay. So now we wait. Proof of existence says I have that same laptop. Oh, the click of doom. Crunch. <laughs> uh, that's how they make your money. Money, not letting you test beforehand. Okay, it's calling my name now. Get back here. All right. Okay, I'll do it. Ah! Ah! Shoot. All right, this is a lot easier on that second time. Is this phone, if this phone doesn't work, I'm going to be pissed. I have to fix it and we're going to do it a whole other, that's going to be a rant stream. Now, remove the repair tray from the display press. Use the gray torque driver and Torx bit to install two new security screws. The ones I threw across the room, they're not good enough anymore. So we, we're going full pentalobes before we test this thing. Okay. There we go. Trash. So much trash. Throw that in there with the sand. Got a, I got a free OEM display adhesive for the next one. All right. Now, where is, I'm using this, I'm using this guy. Because I don't remember which one was which. Did they tell you you're allowed to take it out at least to do this part? Put in your brand new bottom screws. All right, one on each side of the lightning connector. As you install the, the screws, press lightly on the display near the lightning connector. Or not. All right. I really want to know if you go over to the Apple Store, are they actually using the, these little doodads every single time? I bet not. All right. If they're not flush, set aside and remove the screws. Let's see how that one feels. Yeah, it does have that like little clicky. Yeah, see, it doesn't let you over tighten them. I like that part. Okay, important, system configuration is required if you've installed a replacement display, battery, or camera. Disregard notifications about iPhone features on the lock screen, like, this isn't a right, <laughs> screw <laughs> this, you know, ha oh, oh, ha oh, you need to get an Apple thing, until you complete system configuration. Okay, after you've completed all removal reassembly steps, learn how to initiate the system configuration process at support.apple.com slash self-service repair. All right, dare we turn it on and then do the... Check for another caution. I am going to turn... I'm going to dare to turn the phone on and see if the damn screen works before I call up Apple. Should we? Yeah, because right. you don't have your phone. Okay. <laughs> I also... Uh, should I put back in my SIM tray? Were you going to tell me to do that? You never told me to put back in that. So I just throw it away and get another one. On this yellow gold tray. Okay. I don't like this whole, like, th this, it's p bad practice to not test along the way, you know, so that you can see at what point did Where you break your you working <laughs> display, you know, like. Somebody's got a lot of editing to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 
And it's not you, it's going to be the guy with that manual. <laughs> Moment of truth. All right, I gotta get, I gotta get the kind of side view. Oh, okay. there we go. It's the moment of truth. Here's my brand new OEM Apple first ever. Turn on. Here comes the Apple logo. <gasps> Yay! Will it boot up with touch? Now we're gonna throw it in water and see what happens. Let's see if we... I like the seal part though, guys. I do. I really, that, like out of all of this, this thing was incredibly useful. I think you weren't able to test before because you were supposed to have your battery fully dis discharged. Oh, so it was dead. Uh -huh. mm, facts. Mm, okay, yeah, that's a. Does it work? Oh, you yeah. got touch. Does it know my face? No, it doesn't because my face ID is right over there. So, right now. Let's see what kind of messages. lovely messages we get. Important display message. Unable to verify that this iPhone is a genuine Apple display. Still got to call the mothership, even with that OEM Apple display. Learn more. No thanks. Unable to activate Face ID on this iPhone. Yes, I'm aware. All right, so you got to do that. I mean, this is crazy, right? That We've done the repair, we're done. But we have to go call mom and say, is it all right if I put a screen on this phone? You know, that's crazy. Okay, let's do stop, start, and we're gonna now do the, the pairing part. So this is the, the other exciting one. Okay. All right, now we're down to the last step. We have the brand new OEM Apple display on this phone, no more cracks. And we are gonna now pair the new flood illuminator to the logic board. And we're going to tell the logic board that this is a genuine Apple display. And we can only do that by interacting with Apple. So Apple's still controlling us. This repair is completely done with OEM Apple parts, done exactly how they said, more or less. And it still is the same as if I did it over here with an aftermarket screen. Let's go to. Uh, oh, you're invited to take part in a short survey to help us improve your Apple support online. Please select yes if you like to. I would like to participate. All right. Uh, uh, where's the part? Where it says it, to call? Yeah, what? It's, what, where's my manual? Huh, where do I get to the, let's go back to read the manual. Let's go to the 12 Pro manual 12 pro let's scroll all the way down to page 40 or wherever we were oh god that's ridiculous continue on down continue i wonder if anybody tried to call me this whole time don't touch the camera Use that guy, screw everything in with the new screws, press it, close. System configuration is required. Learn how to initiate the system configuration process at support.apple.com slash self-service repair. Click self-service repair. Start with a repair manual. Uh, I did that. Order parts and tools. I did that. Learn how to find the serial number. After ordering, check the status of your purchase. I did that. Repair your device. I did that. A system configuration may be required. The repair manual will indicate if it's required. It's required. <laughs> you will need to contact the self-service repair store support team by chat or phone to initiate system configuration. Okay. Let's do it. Do all this. Right. You this got we need device. to like. How do I like? I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do that up there so that we can see. What Chat. is it like? Can I do it up there? No, I guess we I can't because then. Can. But then we won't have any like. It'll it'll just look messy. All right. Let's see. Where's Chat? 
So I'm at the selfservicerepair.com store and I can learn more. Where is the goddamn chat? Contact us. Uh, customer service team is available 24 seven. Let's call them so that way we can at least record some audio. Face ID, face ID is not working. Okay, let's see how this goes. 1833360310. Does my phone still make phone calls? Welcome to the self service repair support line. Hi. Please listen to the menu options carefully. Sure, no problem. Web store information, press 1. For order status, press 2. For system configuration, press 3. For oh, warranty or damage, Please note, once connected to a live agent, system configuration takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Oh my God. If repair performed with a display, battery, or camera, please press 1. All other repairs do not require system. Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling. Sure. Your call is very important to us. Oh, I'm sure And this... will be answered in the order it was received. Oh, I know that no one else is calling this like that. No, you are out of your mind if you think anyone else did anything like this at all today. Mr. Robot. Hi, Katrina. My name is Leah. Hi, I'd like to configure my new display that I just installed on my iPhone 12 Pro with the self service program. This one's right here. Where's my ambient light sensor feed? Dr. D says, powers are 1 to 4 p.m. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Not doing anything, it's fine. Okay. Absolutely nothing going on. She's definitely working from home. <laughs> Reading the manual now. <laughs> Seriously typing into help desk. How many? You timing this? Huh? You timing this? <laughs> yeah, six fifty three. Jesus. What time did we start? Uh oh uh, I meant the phone call. Three <laughs> thirty. Do you mind if I record this call for quality assurance? Just one second. I should put you on hold. I got put on hold. That means somebody's getting a call right now. First call ever to this poor new employee. <laughs> yeah. I just tried to hit record of the whole. Hey Brad, do you dance? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can completely fix the other phone Bye. in the time that it takes to system configure this one. Not that one. Not that one. Not this. Ouch. <laughs> All right, let's change this screen the other way. Yes. Um, I'm not allowed to have people report the phone call, so if it's... Oh, that's okay, because Apple wouldn't let me do it anyway. It said, please end the call. Hello? Okay. So... Have you gotten a lot of calls for a self-service repair today? She's um, actually, today will be, like, honestly, this will be my first, like, phone call for this week. Oh, okay. Should be smooth, right? Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm cool. Okay. One second. So what do you need from me? Okay. Um, can you provide me with your order number? Order number. Let's see. It might be on some of this paperwork.
word or number? K. Uh, K eight two one. M eight. K eight two one. Mm hmm. M eight. U five. A three. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it back to you see one one time just to clarify. So I got it right. Okay. K eight two one M eight U five A three. Yes. It's M eight like meat. Check me. Not okay. M A, just making sure. Yep, display change on the 12 Pro. Well, I'd rather it took like 30 seconds, but I definitely want to be able to get my face ID back, so I'll say yes. Okay. Okay, before we start, can you please confirm you can power your phone to ensure you have significant battery supply? How much battery you need? I'm going to need to charge you. Oh, okay. 1% to 40%. Um, it needs to be on this turn on. Okay. If it's 1%, we're good. I got 1%. Okay. Are you contacting me off the device you are repairing? Yes. Is that going to be a problem? Um, unfortunately, once we own oh, the system configuration process, we will get disconnected. Do you have another device you can use nope. to contact me? Nope. This is my phone. It's the only one I got. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold one second, for one second. Is that, is that okay with you? Sure. Wow, it's like it, is, it has never occurred to anyone there that, that, that you're going to call up with yeah, your phone. Let me go like, get my landline. <laughs> like, it would be easy to just be like... <laughs> Why don't you... <laughs> Let me see if we can take a picture of a, a selfie of me trying to configure this one. <laughs> this is my favorite part of this whole repair. <laughs> it sounds like snippy music. I mean, like, I just want to, I would like to. Could, could we do a screen share where I get to see you saying, right. listen, this lady doesn't have another phone. She's right. in the middle of a repair, and she has no face ID anymore, and she can't get rid of the message. You know, yeah. What's she supposed to do? You know, you know, like, never thought of that. <laughs> like, we, we never thought anybody would get past the phone. Okay, what'd you find out? Okay, so you're saying that the whole call up on the phone thing, we got to start over and I got to go back to self-service and go to the online chat. Are you going to be yeah. on the chat? Um, there's different representatives, so you may get me or you may get someone else. Okay, did you just start working for just this self-service program or is that just like they added that onto what you, you already do with just customer service? Well, I just, I'm just as new to it as that right yeah, gotcha. Okay. Well, let me go over here to... So are you a Spot? Uh, do you work for Spot or for Apple? I work for Spot. Okay, gotcha. All right. Now, what else does Spot do aside from the 
this self-service for Apple. All right, are you Aaliyah? Yes. Okay, then we're on chat. You see me? Okay, no problem. All right, thanks, Aaliyah. It's going to work. It's going to be Thank great. You. It's going to be awesome. All right. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you. I want to hear my whole music again. Um, ready to system configure my new display for my iPhone 12 Pro. Oh, miss my music. <laughs> Could you like sing or something? Could we get something on Spotify? All right. Now we're on here. This is how long to get banned from Apple support part two. <laughs> <laughs> this poor lady on the phone. Oh, that's my loading chat. <laughs> It's <laughs> really funny. There's, there's one person. She is going to do awesome because this is going to work out. And then she's going to think, hey, I really helped somebody fix their phone. That's pretty awesome. So I think it's going to be great. Has she responded yet to you? Yeah. She says, she, I wrote, ready to system configure my new display for my iPhone 12 Pro. So, I mean, I don't think... To be clear, it's a brand new program, right. and I do not fault them for not, you know, for not getting everything perfectly right on the first time. You know, so far, so far good, right? So far, this now has a new OEM Apple display, and it. And to be honest, I have lived with that crack because I really didn't want to lose my factory seal, and I feel like. This whole business with the this guy pressing that on there, like it was noticeably strong when I was peeling this. Right, taking it off. Yeah, so I'm. I think that's great. You know, like I'm happy to add this to the way that we fix homes, and I'll go buy the other little doodads. Terrifying though, but <laughs> <laughs> but so far, you know, I I think I that this is. This is like something that if I was just reviewing this, it's, hey, look, China made this sealer that makes your factory seal better. And I'd be like, great. Let's pick up where we left off at. Can you please provide me your serial number? Uh, sure. Um, let's look that up in just a minute after I type in my passcode because Face ID doesn't work. Let's see. I am going to assume, all right, serial number, all right, serial, oops, ah, uh-oh, did you just lose the chat, oh no, oh, okay, there it is, all right, here we go, all right, serial number is, at least she can copy paste these numbers, which is good. I mean, this will be cool to just watch the magic happen here on my phone. Unable to verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple display. Well, you need to get verifying. All right. This one, I think I'm just going to stick back on as is. Cause it's a really a different video to say, here's how, here's another way to do it. I think what I'm going to do is make a make a video that says, if you are interested in doing the Apple OEM thing, here's how I would recommend doing it, which is use this alcohol and get your thing up without trying to mess with that thing. And so 14 and 15s come out. Yeah, on the other hand, you can't, if you, I do think you need that. If you're, if you're not going to use this, then you might as well just go to any any franchise store or um, nearby guy on your street. It's the 
So you can't really, you're not going to buy this. So you're going to get that. I think what it really needs is to do it a few times and then be like, all right, here's how this thing works. Step one, ignore the part about you got to wear bulky gloves because that's ridiculous. All right, we are still waiting for Aaliyah to do some magic. Well, chat, what do you think so far about this experience? Does, do you see anything of value for you or, you know, people that you know? These are, these drivers are just too big. I mean, I like having the option to put on my phone the OEM display. Let's see, what do you think? The display press is cool. Dr. D says, no bueno. Uh, only the seal device would be nice. Yeah, well, the good news is that you can, and I did. I bought this as a standalone. So for shops, I mean, an end user's not going to, I don't think an end user's going to do any of this. They're, I mean, they made it ridiculous, right? No one is going to pay Two sixty nine plus fifty dollars, and do deal with all of this hassle when it's two seventy nine to go and get the screen done by Apple. Even if you get a thirty dollar discount, like it's almost like they made it intentionally. Like the pricing, it's like here's the deal: we're gonna give you seventy dollars for your screen. Because that's what they go for. You know what? No, we're not. Because if we gave you $70 for the screen, then it would actually be cheaper for you to fix it yourself. We can't have that. We're only going to give you $30 for the screen. That way, you get $30 for the screen if you don't mess it up. And you got to pay $50 for, for the tool rental. you got to deal with all the hassle. But with all that said, that's really a plus 20 so you're paying two sixty nine plus twenty, so that's two eighty nine. Two eighty nine to do it yourself, net or two seventy nine. We'll do it for you. Which one do you want to do? Yeah. yeah. No one is gonna ever do this, you know. But for you know, so it's really a shops thing, right? But for shops, you can go and buy this, which I think is great. So win, you know, that's awesome. You might need that separated later on in the series. The screens get thinner and thinner. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. All right. Uh, let's go back and see what happened to Ilya. I'm still on it. Please bear with me for a moment. No problem. No problem. I'm just so excited to complete my first ever ever iPhone repair. After she's all done, so you got five more. <laughs> I would never do that. All right, so what do you think, chat? I don't trust Apple Text to open my phone. Mm. Bean says, can I just do a normal screen repair and then do the online chat for system configuration? Uh, I'm going to guess that the moment that you say, what's your order number, and you say, ah... Uh, Nine one one six one three four. They're gonna be like, nope, you did not. There is no record for your device of you buying a screen. But I do think that there's there's definitely no pairing of this screen to the device. So I feel like I can order. You know, I can go order another screen right now for the same phone. And then when it comes, I can give the order number. And then install it on a different one, I think. So question, will they pair it for you if you have no record of having access to the tools? Uh, I don't think you need I think tools. so, yeah. I mean, you could do... So do a normal screen change and call them up the traditional way as you were doing it there with the heat mat and stuff, and then call them up and have them pair it. Will they still pair it? Yes. And that's what, like, you break I fixes on already do. 
one guy came in here and he was like, what if I tear this screen and then what if I go back and put on my old one? Now it is, that also doesn't work, right? So you can't have two working. You can only have one paired wow. flood illuminator. So it is now, Aaliyah is making my phone get a divorce from the flood illuminator that I've always had. Gotcha. And now that flood illuminator is just sitting there like chopped liver. Hmm. But it does mean that, here's a, here's a real use case. Buy a 70 cent adhesive cutter and use that order number. Hmm. I don't think they'll let you buy a 70 cent adhesive cutter without a number. But that, those are all things that we should try. And that is kind of like the next step. That's the next level once we see how this goes is to, you know, see whether or not you can do something like buy another adhesive cutter or another set of bottom screws so you have an order number. And then, you know, here's what would be cool. Just get an aftermarket screen and let's say that you, let's say that you cut the flex on this but you've got somebody else's OEM flood illuminator. And then, you know, so here's mine. There's, this is OEM, right? There's nothing wrong with this. What if I have a phone over here where I damage the flood illuminator or I break the flex or something like that, or it's, you know, it's cut in that moment that I just say, use my order number for my 70 cents adhesive, put this over here, and then have Aaliyah pair it for me. Would that work? That's what I want to try. That's what I want to try. All right, Brad, we've got to order some more adhesive cutters. What if you use the same order number twice? Ooh. Well, I mean, eventually, I think Aaliyah is going to be like, Hey, Jessa. <laughs> oh, wait, here she is. Okay. Put the phone in diagnostics mode. Okay, we gotta, we got to focus now. Here we are. So here's how we're going to do system configuration. Put the phone in diagnostics mode and then complete system configuration. Okay, go to settings. This would be like purple mode. All right, it says go to settings, privacy, That's in my screen. All right, where are we? Settings, privacy, analytics, and improvement. I have, oh yeah. Analytics and improvement, and tap start diagnostics with Apple support. Let's get somebody else. Look on your phone. Does it, do you have that, or is that only on here because it's like. Run diagnostics by tapping agree. You agree that Apple may collect images of this device, which may be linked to the device serial number as well as diagnostic data from the device and any paired accessories or other devices, including the serial number, information about wireless or wired networks you connect to, daily count of call attempts, information about app use. Jesus, we may use this to determine the device's trade-in value. We may use it for audit purposes and improve our products. In addition, Apple and its partners may use the diagnostics data to troubleshoot issues with this device. Screenshot. This is oppressive. Are you out of your mind? No. I would like to say no. Disagree. I'm going to hit disagree. Oh, it goes away. I don't think I have it. Yeah, so it's at... Settings. Privacy. Yeah, settings, privacy. Scroll all the way down. Analytics and improvements. Yeah, analytics and improvements. Share iPhone analytics with analytics data. And then you don't have start diagnostics with Apple support? Oh, uh, it might be because it's not a like 12 Pro enough, you know. So that's the next thing. All right, I'm forced to, to pick agree against my uh, better judgment. Uh, iPhone 12 Pro. I really don't accept it. I'd like to make a note. I don't accept the terms and conditions, and I do feel that uh, 
this is a bit of a shakedown for me to reclaim my face ID, which is a function that I had moments ago, and I really don't want to give up face ID, and I, I feel like I'm being compelled to accept conditions that I do not agree with. Noted. All right, waiting for support. All right, so I'm going to let her know, waiting, waiting for support. Please note, I'm going to let her know, I agree, please note that I do not agree with the, uh, terms and conditions. You know what, I think I'm going to save that for later. We'll, we'll let her, we'll let her let's see. Your phone will restart in diagnostics mode. Please confir confirm when your phone has restarted. Okay. You can see what I type even when I erase it, right? And then I'm going to erase that, see what she says. That's always like, all right, diagnostics mode. Next tab, start diagnostics. Choose a Wi-Fi network. Will do. That is connected and agree to the terms and conditions. Please confirm when you see waiting for support. I don't agree to these terms and conditions. All right, run diagnostics by tapping agree. You agree that Apple may collect images of the device, blah, 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 blah. Apple and its partners may use the diagnostics data to troubleshoot issues with this device, improve our products and services and for anti-fraud purposes. Screw that. Agree. That's very heavy-handed. That's incredibly heavy-handed. I object to that. I mean, there's really no going back. Like, I can't say, I have no ability to say, I don't want to share that much information with you. This is my phone. Like, I don't wish for that. But my screen that was working but cracked is now severely cracked because of the suction cup in that thing and no longer has touch because of the way that thing works. And that is means I can't just put this back on and be made whole how I was before I began this process. I do not like that. Bro, thumbs down. But I do like this press thing. So, giant program to press it. <coughs> All right, chat. Can you imagine asking your customers to, you know, sign all that stuff? If you just take it into the Apple store, you wouldn't have this problem, says Sunny. That's right. And you could save 20 bucks. All right. What a waste of time. Apple is making this harder and painful on purpose. Much privacy to give up for a screen replacement. Sure is. Sure is. And its partners, you know. Yeah, exactly. All right. Waiting for support. Don't they even have like any hold music, nothing. Mm 
And I find that just overall, like, that's, I don't like all of that terms and conditions. And it's really leaves me feeling like this is my phone. It's very personal to me. It's my phone. I use it every day. I own it. I have paid uh, hundreds of dollars to get the, uh, the to get an a OEM part, and I just don't like the, the control that I'm feeling right now because I'm dependent on the manufacturer to be there when they haven't even figured out stuff like, oh yeah, you can call us. Wait, who are you calling us from your phone when you're trying to fix? Oh, we don't have a solution for that. I have to trust them with with them just saying we have access to whatever we want or you're screwed or you can like that's crazy like that's incredibly incredibly heavy-handed this must be the longest screen repair ever yes apple you pay for it we control it and we break it yeah so far, this is a lot of hassle. My recommendation, buy that thing and leave the rest of it alone. It is not worth it in any way to avoid the, you know, not a genuine screen message. In fact, it kind of does inform what I might say to customers that come in um, about the message, you know, the display message, is that if you want your screen replaced, then you can either live with the message or you can agree to this. And I'm gonna print out that thing that I was forced to hit agree to and say, you can, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be forced to say yes to that if you want your important message. We can't verify this is a display. That's your two choices, message or that. And that's what it comes down to. And I think I'm gonna print that out. Have they started the system configuration yet to pair the new display? I'm at this screen here where it says waiting for support. Let's go back and see. Uh, you know, I did that and it says waiting for support still. Okay. Well, this is really taking forever. Waiting for support. I'm not sure if you're like, well, then I don't know what to tell you. Put your all three back in. Oh, we will now start, 23 minutes in, we will now start system configuration. When it completes, your phone will automatically restart diagnostics mode. When it does, press exit diagnostics. Let me know when your phone restarts. Okay, not yet. Well, I guess I'll throw these screw these screws away. Put them in with the sand. This is taking way too long. Oh, All right, let's pack up this stuff. Uh, she's about to start system configuration. Oh, system configuration. System configuration. It is configuring. It's happening. Remember what happens if I hit skip? It may take five to ten seconds for your phone to restart. Once your phone restarts, this completes the steps for system configuration and the device is now ready for use. Restarting. Restarting. I think. Okay, it's restarting. What was this part for? I think that's for the crack screens. Oh, is the it like a suction cup? Oh. Give you a flat surface. That's pretty clever. I like that.
sure for the schematic. I would never do that. That's wrong. All right. Exit diagnostics. Exit diagnostics. Uh, clicking exit diagnostics now. And restarting again. Don't need all the price before you get that. Okay, here it is. It's my phone again. Unable to verify this phone has a genuine Apple display. That is not cool. Here we go. See it? The message. Um, it restarted in normal mode, but still says unable. To verify this iPhone has a genuine Apple display. All right. But will Face ID work? Hey, Face ID is working. It paired my thing. Face ID works with a brand new. Well, it, does, it did work. Hello, see me. Uh oh, Face ID, no! Face ID, yay! Face ID is working. Okay. Let me go over here to settings and. I'm going to say I'm going to restart it again and see if it still has that message. All right, how do you restart these again? I don't even know. Up, up down, down up down, up down, up down. Up down power. Up down power? Yep, and hold down power. Let's don't you have to hold down like two of them? Oh wait, I'm just gonna... Unsupported URL, what? I think it's gonna be okay. I think it, I mean it recognized face ID so it must have paired, but we'll... Just not restart, right? Huh? That's not restart. Right? It'll restart. There it is. Alright, this is... We gotta figure out what's going back here to the mothership. Almost. It is nearly finished. You finished the other screen already? Yeah, I took it off and put it back on. Okay, here we go. I don't see any message. Uh, come on. I don't see any face ID. Face ID, see me, it's me. I don't like this face ID. Swipe up to unlock. Oh yeah, if you restart on it, may not do that. All right. No message. Off, on. Do you see me? Nope. Unlock, you fool. It's like you can pick one. You get the message or face ID, but not both. Yay, it sees me. Unlock, swipe up, no message. Yay! Success! I was going to ask you to restart the device. Okay, it is working now. Thanks, Aaliyah. Alright. So, there you go. Let's see if there's anything else to talk about, but um, it, uh, it is working. This now has the first ever authorized OEM Apple screen replacement that I've ever done. And it worked. It took forever. It was incredibly invasive. 
from a terms and conditions standpoint, so I don't recommend it. But on the plus side, I really liked the display press. On the con side, it was a net cost of $269 plus $50 tool rental. True so? I can sell back to Apple my original screen for $30. So that makes it as a net of $10 more than just going down to the Apple store and having them do it. And a whole lot of hassle. So it's clearly not designed for anyone to actually use. However, it's going to have a good use case for anybody that has more than one thing wrong with their phone, like me. I still have, and I'm choosing to live with, a cracked rear camera glass. If I had gone to the Apple store, they would not have put a screen on a device that had a second problem like that. So this was my only option. Even though it's more expensive, I was able to get a genuine display, signed over my life and data, but it did work. So there you go. So that is my thoughts on self-service repair. Bottom line, shops, go buy one of these. These are cool. Everything else is a, pretty much a big waste. All right, I will edit this down into some actual useful videos so that you guys can see in a smaller digestible format what it's like to do the self-service repair. But it does work, and that was my experience. There you go. All right, iPad for him. Could have gone to IRP. I wonder <laughs> if True Tone's working. All right, well, let's see. Let me do check on True Tone. And then we'll, then we'll be done. All right. True Tone, off, on. Yes, True Tone is working. There's my True Tone is off, it's a little bit blue. True Tone is turned on, and now it's a warm color. Yep, True Tone is intact. Okay, all right, that is all we gotta do. So let's hit stop recording and stop streaming, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for bearing with us, it was massively long. And I will jump, I'll jump on and ask, answer any questions in the comments that you might have on what it was like to do this. Okay? See you next time!